your sister is a flurry of addictive traits seemingly brought on by the struggle with her own identity. At what point in her own survival of substance abuse, constant pregnancy, and domestic abuse did you understand your own role in that development, and how did that truth repair your relationship with her? To be honest, I think um, a lot of what I ended up doing throughout the course of the film was realizing that I had a lot less to do with it than I thought I did, um, uh, which is kind of classic, you know, like to like project that like um, I had somehow really, um, you know, broken my sister or something. And the more I learned about her and and our relationship, the more I was actually able to like, um, understand and forgive myself through that. Um, but also just understand that like, you know, our relationship was, was a fraction of her experience in her life, you know? Um, it was not the, the be all end all of her, you know, capacity to make decisions about herself. Um, and so I think that was a big, big learning experience for me. I think, um, I think it was helpful though for her to also hear me acknowledge that I didn't feel great about that and that it was something that you know, kept me up or and not literally kept me up at night, but it was something that I often thought about and reflected on and felt, you know, somewhat responsible um, for. And I think she, you know, in the film, my sister is a little bit of a ham sometimes and, um, you know, is, is, is poking me, you know, on camera. <laughs> and, and so, um she's doing the younger you know she's like pulling on my shirt or whatever um and so sometimes some of the things she says are coming partially from her um hilarious and twisted sense of humor and what she thinks about kind of fucking with me um and but but there's always like that element of truth too you know like she like when she's like oh you're the reason i have a drug problem she's sort of like half joking half serious and and you don't know where that leaves you, you know? You play with images in the film that are familiar to our timeline, that of 1980s and 90s camp quarter video. What have you found within those miles of unique images from that era that is beautiful beyond film or any other type of Im in imagery in our modern context? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I try to stay away from material fetishism when it comes to formats. Um, but, but there really is something beautiful to, um, tracking issues that arise with VHS. Um, and, you know, I think it's the same type of fetishization that like comes with film stocks, you know, and grain and hair and dust and texture and those kinds of things you get from, uh, eight millimeter film, um, from that era or 60 millimeter film from that era, which, you know, when you shoot 16 millimeter now, you don't get much of that at all. It looks pretty beautiful. Um, so those impurities become really a marker of the era in which the work was made. Um, you know, I love being able to capture the, um, the, the tracking on screen, the like recording documentation, the burn in of the date and the time code and all these things um, are just so kind of, you know, nostalgic. And I think probably more so for people in my age range yeah. um, in the same way that like, I don't know, I have a couple of students that shoot, shoot on VHS right now. And, and I'm like, why are you doing, like, what are you doing that for? You know, they're like, I like the way it looks. I'm like, so what, you know, you shouldn't do that unless you have some contextual basis for it. You know, like you need to bring some like intention there. You can't just say, I like the way it looks. Um, Cause then you're just a poser. But um, <laughs> I think, you know, there is something that's very like, um, you know, texturally captivating about moving between formats that way. As a personal statement, does North by Current feel like a breakthrough for you in the sense that your filmmaking going forward will be different or evolve in a different way? You know, I think the biggest thing that North by Current has done in the schema of my career is just, um, put my work in a little bit more of a mainstream uh, accessible context. Um, 
I think, you know, part of the intention with this work was to make, make a film that could go outside of my usual areas, which are mostly like experimental film festivals, video art avenues, um, galleries, museums, screening series, things like that. Yeah. Um, so with this film, I did have a little more um, interest in getting it into, I wouldn't say a mainstream audience, but you know, it's, it's going to be on PBS in November. Like that's a huge deal for me. Like congratulations. having the film be on TV is like amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I felt like there was enough like interwoven um, kind of thematics happening in the film that it could be something that could be like um, accessible to a much wider audience than some of my other work, which is very like art housey. Um, and so I don't know that I will bring that necess that type of very codified storytelling into future work, but I think, um, you know, it's great for visibility. <laughs> um, <laughs> so like, I think, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I will always make work that is sort of on the periphery. Um, and part of that is like, that's, that's kind of just where my interests are. Um, and, you know, I think this film, I, I won't say I expect it to be a kind of, kind of an outlier in my work, but I do always make different kinds of work. I don't tend to kind of make the same film twice. Um, and I'm sure I will continue to work in documentary and work in cross media platforms and work with, you know, archival material, work with voiceover, because those are all things I do all the time. Right. Um, but, you know, I probably won't be, be making another documentary about my family, <laughs> you know. This is Patrick McDowell for HollywoodChicago.com, copyright 2021.